worldviews. It's called Why Worldviews Commit Suicide, right? Why They Destroy Themselves. And uh, so that's what she's been helping us with. We, uh, we finished up last time talking about um, this uh, uh, two things. First of all, how uh, non-biblical worldviews attempt to exempt themselves from their own critiques, right? Everybody else is wrong, but somehow I can see I have a great perspective on you're just so great, yeah. Tony. I just want you to know. That's that. right. <laughs> but everybody else, right? Right. <laughs> and she lists, uh, you know, the the usual suspects: uh, Marx, Nietzsche, Freud, and uh, Skinner. You know, as folks who who do this partic- these particular cre- uh, critiques. She says, anytime that a truth claim says that truth claims are nothing but X in your you know um, truth finding meter should go on, right? right. And say, okay, is your, is your truth claim X as well, right? And so that's what she was getting at. Uh, and then we ended up with her, her list here of about six or seven things that she suggests that we have to have, we, you know, we have to believe in order to function from day to day. We have to assume things like the material world is, is, is real. We have to assume that, right? It's nothing that, um, as the, uh, Logical positivists wanted us to say, uh, we, there's no experiment that we can really do, right? Because it could still all be in our head. Right. It can still all be um, that the universe works by cause and effect, that um, mathematical truths hold universally, that memories are basically reliable. We have to assume that, right, in order to, to um, do science, that other people have minds, that the laws of logic are valid. And we have to assume the basic reliability of human cognition. So in order to function in the world, these are, if we have to assume something in order to function in the world, she tells us, that means that it is part of general revelation. It's part of the created order. Which everyone has access to. Everyone has access to, exactly. In fact, she says that C.S. Lewis unmasks materialism. Uh, she says, to practice the skill of uh, detecting self-referential absurdity, that's this idea of the, uh, you know, as we've been speaking about, worldviews committing suicide, right, when you apply them to themselves. She says, let's dissect a few more examples. Uh, because materialism or naturalism is the unquestioned assumption in much of academia, let's begin with materialism, right? It claims that my thoughts are products of physical events, Neurons firing in my brain, these physical events, that's all thoughts are, right? They're the product of these physical events. Materialism claims that um, um, these thoughts are like this. And so what does this mean, she asks us, right? Uh, It means, she says, that when I uh, calculate that 5 plus 7 equals 12, or when I perceive a red rose, or when I judge that torturing people is evil, what is really happening is that my brain is doing physical things like producing chemical reactions and causing neurons to fire. That's what's really going on, says materialism, right? So there is, so these things then are just physical events that are happening in the world, in this case, in my, the, the location of my brain. So she says, a case in point, a recent book, it's about materialism, claims that ideas our physical states of matter within our brains. That's what ideas are, physical states of matter in our brains. Thus, the thought process is a series of brain states, right? It's various patterns of neurons that are firing in different ways, right? It's a series of physical uh, configurations of matter, each causing the next in accordance with the deterministic laws that govern the interaction of physical objects, right? So like all the physical laws, it's just part of, the physical laws. Um, She says the problem is that digestion, for instance, is not something that can be true or false, right? In other words, if it's just physical things that are happening in our brain, right, it's akin to all the physical things that are happening in our body, like digestion. Yeah, breathing. Yeah, right? And of course, you know, digestion is not something that can be true or false. It's just a biological fact. Right. right? I mean, it's, it's not saying, am I digesting food? It's saying digesting food is yeah. a physical process. So right. uh, uh, her torturing people is evil. Yep. That's just a, that's just a thing. A physical process <laughs> that's going on. 
in my brain. So, and uh, that's all it is. That whole idea or is all that's all that that idea is, right? Just like digestion is digestion. That's just it, right? It's something uh, that can't be true or false, right? So if our thoughts are also biological facts determined by biological laws, then they're not the sort of thing that can be true or false. Right. So uh, you can never be wrong. Look at that. You're always yeah. right. Well, no, you can't or always right. be right either. Yeah, you you're, can't be wrong or right. You're just always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now notice, uh, she asks, but does this include our thoughts about materialism? Right. So she's, she she's, says, she's a- attempting to apply well, it to herself or to, to itself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And so when we do that, it undercuts the, its claim to truth. When the implications of materialism are applied to itself, itself, she says, it commits suicide. Right. So if, if my thoughts are only neurons firing in my brain and certain patterns and that sort of thing, then my thoughts about materialism are the same thing. And therefore, how do I know that materialism exists, is true, or is anything? Right. You, you right? couldn't even say that's true because it's not a, it's not a truth statement. It's a brain state. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah, exactly. It's a brain state. It's yeah. not a truth statement. Yeah. Good. She says, C.S. Lewis makes a similar argument in several of his writings. Here's an example. And she quotes him here. She says, if minds are wholly dependent on brains and brains on biochemistry and biochemistry in the long run on the meaningless flux of the atoms, I can understand how the thought of those minds should have any more significance than the sound of the wind in the trees. <laughs> he says, Lewis then uh, shows how this view defeats itself. Quote, but if I can't trust my own thinking, of course, I can't trust the arguments leading to atheism and therefore have no reason to be an atheist or anything That's else. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah, he's unable uh, to act. That's right. So how do atheism or materialism avoid uh, this self-refuting conclusion? Well, Lewis calls it a tacit exception, <laughs> right? All everybody else except me, right, is right. I'm the only one that can see from the God's eye view, although um, for materialist God doesn't exist. Lewis. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for their own theory, they, they have a tacit exception, right, at the moment anyway, that they're stating their claim. In building that case, they must implicitly trust that their own thinking is correct or true, right? They must exempt themselves from their own reductionistic categories of analysis. As one philosopher says, she mentions the materialist functions as though he were an angelic observer, somehow able to float above the deterministic cage in which he locks everyone else in, right? (laughs) So in essence, material must uh, tacitly assume a Christian epistemology, that is a Christian view of knowledge, how we know things, uh, right? Or at least when they're arguing for their claims. Indeed, the sheer act of asserting materialism contradicts itself. How is that? How can, how just the asserting that I'm a materialist, how does that contradict itself? Well, she gives us several reasons. She says, if everything that exists is material, is that statement itself material, or is it merely a series of sound waves? Right. That is, I mean, or I mean, that's what they'd have to say. Right. right? That statement right. is just mere, a mere a series of sound waves. If I write out the statement, um, is it nothing but marks on a piece of paper? Of course not. The statement has linguistic meaning. It has logical properties. It has social function. Right. Communicating the others, all of which transcend the material dimension. Right. Right. And so, ironically, materialism cannot even be stated, she says, without refuting itself. Because humans are whole and integrated beings, we should expect our thoughts to be accompanied by physical events in the brain. Of course, that's true. Mm -hmm. But if we reduce thought processes to brain processes only, the result is a logical contradiction. Right. Right. So the reductionist tries to to try to take this part and make it the whole, where it's, it's just a part. Because yeah, and, and and they themselves, uh, even though they're they they wouldn't want to say it because it undercuts their their foundational belief, they too then believe that because by asserting it, they are trying to convince you that uh, materialism is the way to go. There's only material right. things. That's not material. What you just said, it, it's material in the in the sense in in, in one sense that uh, you're using your vocal cords to vibrate. Uh, you know the the air. 
and uh, your your brain is is having uh, a, a neurological response. My ears are are are, are uh, you know the vibrations and right. the, the so yeah, the so yeah, all, all that is true. All that is physical. But what is the ultimate end to, for for somebody saying? But it's more destroyed? than physical. You right. can't just reduce it down to physical, right. right? It has meaning. It has you know properties other than physical. It has logical properties and communication functions and that sort of thing. And so, yeah, it's more than just physical. So you can't do that reductionism right. without being yeah. inconsistent. That is contradictory. Yeah. Or you 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 have some means by which to to have it be a this kind of mere nar- narrative or or something like that. And there you're yeah. getting into a different. Into a different function. Angelic, that is, you're the angelic observer. <laughs> yeah. 